Moving on to OKW now, and we're starting out with the 105 millimeter artillery brush. This is one that's in scavenge, and it's got this function that probably a lot of you are not aware of actually. So if you have like a huge amount of munitions like in your bank, it will actually drop more shells. And there used to be a strategy with this back when you could actually target off maps inside the opponent's base, where you could just bank enough munitions, click this on US base, and just destroy the whole base, and you'll win the game. Obviously, this hasn't been the case for quite a long time. So now this can you know, receive some changes here to become viable again. So the requirements now for the additional shell being dropped quite dramatically. Instead of being from 300 to 600, it's now 225 munitions to 300. And the additional shells per level are getting dropped from 5 to 3. So easier to access, a slightly lower number of shells, but as you would expect, I mean, like, this is when you'd start getting the extra shells before and now you've got them uh, fully stacked up 12 extra shells so nice change there making uh, this maybe uh, unknown factor for the 105 uh, a bit more of a relevant factor now all right let's see what a fully juiced up 105 millimeter howitzer barrage looks like i've got a thousand munis in the bank let's go I counted 26 or 27 shells there. The 280 millimeter rocket barrage. This is the you know, walking Stuka barrage that's in Firestorm. Previously, it could uh, fail to destroy stationary team weapons such as you know, howitzers because it had the similar projectile issue to that the walking Stuka had previous to our uh, last patch, whereas direct hits could do nothing and then AoE damage would do the damage. So it's getting a change here penetration going from 0 to 60. The AOE penetration getting reduced. Testing out the revised rocket brass, got a whole bunch of howitzers, mortar pits, 17 pounders. Let's see how it goes. Firing on enemy forces. Artillery is converging on the enemy's exact position. Howitzers first. Yep, those all got obliterated. Up the mortar pits. Mm, creep. <laughs> this is without brace, of course. Firing on enemy forces. Artillery is converging on the enemy's exact position. Check on brace for this one on two of these. See how it goes. Unbraced leaves it on an absolute pixel. Braced, a bit over a quarter of its health gone. The buildable flak emplacement, that's the one that's in fortifications and Luftwaffe ground forces. Population cost is going down from four to three and can no longer be decrewed anymore, must be destroyed. It was kind of like a cheese strategy on some maps where you could throw a Molotov onto this, decrew it, and then jump onto it with your conscripts and in their own base, and very hard to deal with. It won't be a factor anymore and maybe you know notice a bit more towards relevancy i have been trying this out in a couple of my own games recently and it's tricky you know it's reasonably expensive the mobile takes a long time to build so slight nudge here for the flak emplacement command panther with the removal of artillery flares from spec ops the command panther is receiving a flare to somewhat compensate for its loss now has access to the artillery flares ability 60 range so that's not a huge range and 50 munitions so yeah you won't be able to use this flare to like scout like way on the other side of the map spot for howitzers to kill or whatever You're gonna have to work for a bit more maybe put your command panther in danger taking a look at the command panther's flare now 60 range you can see the range there quite a long range casting see how big the flares are 
a pretty, pretty good chunk of the map there. Two flares, in fact, interesting. Looks like I have, have about 50. Oh man, continually going off, okay. Looks like they have maybe like a radius of 50, kind of similar to the Command Panthers area of those flares. So they last a good chunk of time and they light up a, a pretty reasonable area of the map. About as far as you can see from each to edge on the screen. <laughs> The Command Tiger is receiving a couple changes here to its uh, activatable like aura ability. It no longer debuffs the Command Tiger while it's active. I think it used to like maybe half the rate of fire on its gun while it was active. So you ne almost never saw anybody use it. Uh, the, I think the munitions cost is also going down to 35. Command point requirements, similar to other heavy tanks, going from 12 to 11. And uh, Tigers, now you know, th both this one and the LC one, Vet 2 provides a, a minus 10% weapon scatter. I think, you know, before the last round of nerfs to heavy tanks, it had minus 20% to weapon scatter at Vet 2. And then that got outright removed in the live version. So now it's getting dialed back a little bit, minus 10%. The early warning flare traps, these are the ones in Overwatch. The plant time is getting reduced from 8 to 4 seconds. We kind of didn't see too much of these after they didn't auto plant anymore. Just about nobody would plant them. They'd rather be building sandbags or something like that. So, you know, now you can do them uh, quite a lot more quickly. And these are, you know, free. So uh, nice to see. The, probably see quite a lot more of these flare traps again. Emergency repairs. This is the one in the Elite Armored Commander. The repair rate of emergency repairs is being reduced while the duration is being increased to make the repairs take longer but restore the same amount of hit points. So the repair rate is going down from 30 to 20 but the duration is going up by six seconds the ability restored hit points too quickly and got vehicles back into the fray after an incredibly short period of time in comparison to most other repair abilities you know i'm a little bit sad about this one personally i kind of liked that slightly different feel of the emergency repairs from the elite armored command i felt like that was one of its real assets it didn't like fully repair the tank i think it only repaired like maybe 300 health something like that so yeah, I'm a bit sad about this and you know, it's not such an emergency when it takes 21 seconds instead of 15 seconds, right? For the Fatherland, this is the ability in the Overwatch Commander. It's getting some tweaks to be a little bit more similar to the other boosts that are related to this. So the duration is going up actually from 30 to 45 seconds. Speed boost is deactivated while in combat. And the recharge timer is going up. 60 seconds to 90 seconds so it's just not active 24 7. TV fortifications and field defenses these are getting merged in the fortifications commander which I believe also does give these bonuses to Luftwaffe ground forces so I think your fox grenadiers with Luftwaffe ground forces will also be able to plant those S mine fields which could be quite troubling. The incendiary munitions for the LEIG this is the one in the firestorm commander the cost of that incendiary barrage is going down from 35 to 15 munitions so it'll be pretty spammable at 15 munitions you know, it, it still doesn't seem like super strong to me overall as a barrage. Basically only ever saw it against some placements. So maybe at 15 munitions, players will be more encouraged to use it on like infantry or moving targets as well. The Yag Tiger's piercing shell ability is going down a cost from 70 to 60 munitions. The King Tiger's Pintle machine gun upgrade is being reduced in munitions cost down to 50. The LEFH Howitzer is getting a, a rework of its VET-1 ability. Not going to be counter barrage anymore. It's being replaced with Overwatch fragmentation air burst shells. Air burst shells have a large damage radius, but less direct damage and low penetration. No cost, 60 second duration on target zone. Having a look at the new Vet 1 ability for the LFH here, the air burst Overwatch. So uh, you can see on the tactical map. Oh no, you can't. You can see on the mini map. <laughs> how big of an area that covers. It's a pretty good chunk of change. Pretty large amount of territory. It appears you also can't do this in enemy territory. Enemy held territory only in your own. See that I can't do it in that sector up there, even though it's not connected. Only my own territory. I'm going to do it just here. We've got a couple of squads, one in the base. Good spread. In fact, I can do it if I do it over here. I can also hit the squad over here. Got the fog of war off here, so you know it's probably better scatter because of that. Just first first initial look. 
see like a very small targeting zone indicated. Airburst shells. Not sure how they compare to the ones in uh, Anvil. Doesn't look like we really got a good connection so far. All of them kind of scattering off to the sides, but it looks like they got pretty good, pretty medium AOE. How long is this last for? 60 seconds. So is it fired two shells at a time? Shells seem like they get a little bit too low to the ground, really, for the uh, visual effect. Unfortunately, this model survived here. So you don't get to see if it's going to target something else. Alright, well, we'll try it again in the uh, same position. Still within the uh, confines here, and we'll see what happens. So I clicked it here, so the targeting circle still stays here. On the uh, minimap, like that's way smaller than the indicated area of the ability. In fact, you can see the edge of the ability, those conscripts are in it. Those guys are not, though. Neither are they. So it kind of looked like when I was targeting that uh, all of these squads were in. So maybe there's some issues with the active zone not matching this, but even then, this squad is on the edge of that. Whereas, like, the indicated zone on the minimap is maybe, like, to the edge of this targeting circle here. So pretty small area, honestly. This is where I targeted them before, and you can see the red circle, like, very comfortably. All three units were inside it, so not sure about that one. Guess we'll do it over here this time. So first the howitzer spins to that angle, and then the circle appears. Interesting. About half health there. It looked like it was slightly off target as well. Way off target on that occasion. Looks like you wait about 10 seconds. It fires again. There we go, that one's gone. Will it now target the conscript in the enemy territory? Looks like it's still in the zone, maybe just on the edge of it. On the minimap UI. Doesn't look like it's going to get targeted. Alright, targeting right on the edge of the zone here, into the enemy territory. Just right on the edge of the friendly territory. Hmm. So yeah, it looks like it's not going to target units even if the uh, indicated zone, they're in uh, enemy territory. Put this to neutral now, see what happens. What about if I control it now? After the fact, is that going to change anything? Yes. So this only works on friendly territory. You can't target it on the edge of your zone and it will attack them. You have to control it. See how it goes against tanks. I didn't realize I didn't show this earlier. So yeah, it will target tanks. See it had low penetration. There's T-34 here. Looks like maybe could have done some damage to the frontal armor if it penetrated there. Definitely did not. There it goes again. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm not sure how much penetration it has, but it seems to be very low, as it mentioned. Alright, let's try out the Airburst Overwatch again. It's time against some more lightly armoured vehicles, the M3A1, got two T-70s here, try to clump them up. Give us a maximum chance to see what happens, okay, so about a quarter of the health gone. Of 
from a M3. Doesn't look like it did any damage to the T70 there. It looks like it would have got clipped as well, maybe even on the rear armour too. Oh, there we go. Got some damage on the T70 there. So yeah, it's not uh, particularly good against vehicles, and it does target them. Which is uh, a little bit troubling, because I'd say it would largely be wasted. So it doesn't look like you're going to do almost any damage to anything larger than like a super light scout car. Alright, so I want to see if I can target this. Yeah, so you can target this into the fog. You don't need sight to target it. Got three conscript squads here. I'm going to target this zone. I'm guessing that it's not going to automatically target them in the fog of war. I'm going to double check. No, not firing at them. Steering pies will come forwards. Do some scouting. So yeah, you need sight as well. So overall, I would say there are very few scenarios that I could think of that I would use this instead of just going for a barrage, if I'm honest. Like the AoE doesn't appear to be like that special compared to just a regular howitzer shell. Uh, the conditions are a bit weird on it. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm not, a, not, not keen on this ability. The Opal Blitz, this is the one in the Firestorm Commander. The following change will make the Opal Blitz more vulnerable to attack from infantry units and machine guns when caught out of position. The armor on that is going down. So a reduction of three on the front, one on the rear. Personally, I don't feel like this was entirely necessary, but all right. A couple small tweaks here to the Pack 43. The gun health of the Pack 43 is being increased to make the weapon more difficult to destroy, though the weapon will still be vulnerable to decrewing. Penetration has also been increased to match other heavy attack anti tank guns. So the gun health is going up from 570 to 640. So this is like, say, if you decrewed the gun by like incendiary barrage or something, came up and started shooting it with your tank. This uh, particular change doesn't actually change the shots to kill from most medium tanks. So it's still a four shot kill, but maybe in some other scenarios, a slight health boost will help you keep your pack 43 alive. And yeah, the penetration is going to a thousand of all ranges, you know, long range. Get a chance to bounce against some of the big boys, such as the uh, IS-2, maybe the ISU-152. A small handful of tanks long range that had a chance to bounce, so now it's going to penetrate guaranteed. Panzer Fusiliers mentions here that the aim was try to try and uh, make them slightly better in the early game same in in game but i believe this change was actually not supposed to be included so i'm kind of just going to brush by it here radio science this is a pretty controversial uh, ability receiving some significant adjustments its speed bonus is being limited to only activate when the units are out of combat as well as changes to the cooldown and the duration we still want to maintain the ability's purpose of hiding units on the minimap as it fits well with the commander's theme and provides a different sort of effect compared to most other abilities. We do want to add counterplay, however, with the ability now giving a warning to all players when the ability activates. So speed boost is now disabled when in combat, which is kind of nice because, you know, activating Ray Science kind of got used a lot where you just have a blob of STG folks and you just be using that speed boost to kind of like chase the squad further and look for wipes. So now that won't work anymore, you'll be a... Uh, Speed boost will be disabled in combat, but it's actually being increased from 20% uh, to 40%. The cooldown is going way up, or well, up by a reasonable margin, to two minutes, and that's combined with a duration decrease to 45 seconds instead of 60. The cost is also going up by quite a lot, 40 to 70 munitions, and the command point requirement is also going up from zero to two. Also, it now plays a radio static at the start of the ability. So you as the opponent, when the OKW player activates the radio science, you'll also hear that or whatever that the ability plays for the OKW player when they activate it. So you'll know like, okay, they've activated radio science. Can't really rely on my mini map and tactical map. I have to pay closer attention. So you won't get caught like really, really badly off guard by activation of radio science. All right, going to test out the new radio science. Should give a bigger speed boost now. Radio silence. Radio silence. 
And yeah, that's the radio noise it should make, I believe, for the opponent. And yeah, as soon as you start shooting at something, counts as you being in combat. Speed boost disables. After you've been out of combat, maybe for... Six seconds or so. Something like that. Re-engages. And we can time it, maybe. Oh, there's 11. And then that reactivated about 5. So that was closer to 10 seconds, I guess. See so yeah, a bigger speed boost, but won't work in combat anymore. Short duration as well. So yeah, tested this myself as the OKW player and who run Bardtown as the OKW player. Neither of us could hear it. He picked a commander and yeah. So it appears the radio science... Science radio sound is not working. Sturm officer. The forced retreat no longer improves the performance of hostile infantry near the retreating squad. So it used to be the case that you forced retreat squad, but then the uh, squads next to that got like a 50% accuracy bonus or something like that. It was kind of nutty. So <laughs> like, you know, this ability already costs like quite a lot of munitions and then I'll give the nearby squads for the opponent a buff as well. So very hard to use effectively. And now that will no longer be the case. They won't get that buff anymore. We'll just force the retreat. Stern Pioneer Flamethrower. This is the one available in the Firestorm Commander. It is no longer mutually exclusive with the Mine Sweeper. So you'll be able to upgrade a Flamer and a Sweeper on the Stern Pioneers. Which is kind of nice. Kind of similar to the Panzer Trick change in the last patch. Stern Tiger can no longer be abandoned if hit while reloading, kind of more similar to the AVRE in that department, though it still does suffer like a pretty big speed debuff of uh, moving while reloading, whereas the AVRE doesn't. But you also won't be able to go for that kind of exploit where you could, you know, like attack ground or whatever your own Sturm Tiger and try and get multiple ones. Not that that was terribly good because the Sturm Tiger's not terribly good, but there you go. Change there to the Sturm Tiger. Valiant Assault, kind of similar to the other global infantry buffs. The accuracy bonus it gives is going down to 15%. And instead you're going to get a bonus to received accuracy instead of actual accuracy. So it won't be quite so wipe happy, but you'll be more durable. Zeroing Artillery now displays its area on the tactical map in addition to the in-game battle map. And the cost is going down from 300 to 250 munitions. Don't know if that was... 100% necessary, but all right. Yeah, it's kind of nice to be able to see it on the uh, map now. Zeroing artillery, now 250 munitions. We'll see what it looks like on the uh, minimap and tactical map. On the enemy's exact position. The uh, small circle there. A very, very small. Considering you can see where the conscripts are. They're right on the edges of the zone. There's a circle on the tactical map. It's just minute. Conscripts seem to be very far away from that. But on the mini-map it appears to be about the right size, so pretty much bang on. It's just on the tactical map. It's uh, too small. Interesting. Moving on to Ossia, and we're starting out with the 251 Mobile Observation Post. It is receiving some slight improvements to make it harder to detect and improve flare usage. The flare cost is going down by 10 munitions and the decloak radius is going down by 5 range. That means that enemy squads are going to have to get 5 range closer before this comes out of camouflage. This is currently available in the uh, Strategic Reserves Commander, the one with the Tiger Ace, the new one with the Sock Grenadiers as well. And it's getting added to Mobile Defense instead of the Austroop and Reserves in that commander. Assault and Hold, this is the buff in the German Infantry Commander, you know, the one with five main grenadiers. It's getting a change similar to other global infantry buffs. Some of the weapon accuracy is getting exchanged for received accuracy, so less offensive power, more defensive power. Assault Officer, I believe this is supposed to be the Artillery Field Officer. It's having some uh, pretty big changes here. You know, this kind of comes online quite late. I think it's maybe at two command points. And it's got like MP40s, not terribly strong. In terms of DPS arriving at that timing, you know, kind of often up against like bar riflemen at that timing and it's, it's struggle street. So it's receiving some changes here. Reinforcement cost a big reduction down by four 
manpower per model, which is pretty nice. And now has 50 vision range up from 35. So 35 is a standard sight. 50 is like pr pretty damn good. Kind of, uh, I think Pathfinders have the same level of sight as this. So it's a pretty big boost to it, especially, you know, if you want to call in those abilities that it has, having that extra sight could be really handy. And, you know, if you kind of want to use this as a squad to flank machine guns as well, once again, 50 sight, you can dodge the machine gun, maybe come in on the flank, be really handy as well. So uh, some pretty big buffs there to the artillery officer. Quick look at the artillery field officer's new line of sight here. You can see the purple lines are 10 range, so 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. D-range sight there. Doesn't change the heavy mortar barrage, which unlocks at VET 1. That has a cast range of 35, I believe. So yeah, it doesn't really impact that. But for the coordinator barrage, that's the one that uh, Panzerwerfers, you can get them to fire again, ignoring their cooldown. Looks like that goes out a little bit further. 10, 20, 30, 40. Is that 45 range on that one? So yeah, the bonus sight is going to make it a little bit easier for you to use the uh, coordinated barrage, as well as quite helpful. What about the smoke? Yeah, the smoke doesn't change either. So yeah, it's going to be helpful for the coordinated barrage, dodging team weapons, just general sight. But yeah, doesn't really make you just straight up stronger with the heavy mortar barrage. Breakthrough, this is the ability in the encirclement doctrine, the one that costs fuel, that buffs up your tanks, causes them to decap points. Now provides a plus 15% reload bonus when active. So a slight buff there to break through. The Command Panzer IV is receiving a pretty big overhaul here. First off, it's getting a smoke shell to allow it to support an assault or cover a retreat. The command point requirement has also been removed to allow the command tank to arrive when the support armor core or the PV Panzer Corps has been built. So I believe you could call it in once you've constructed those tech structures. Has also received two new Vent 1 abilities to replace Blitzkrieg for this test. One of the two will be decided as the final ability at a later date. So Smoke Shell, 15 munitions, Command Point Requirement removed, Blitzkrieg ability removed. Light Artillery Barrage, similar to the Commander ability, buys four light shells in a slight delay, and then the next four for 12 shells in total, 60 munitions, that's pretty strong, or Mark Vehicle. Mark a hostile vehicle for 30 seconds. Target vehicle is 25% easier to hit and has minus 20% reduced armor, 35 munitions. Interesting. So having a look at the revised command tank here, 360 manpower, 100 fuel. And I can't call it in. I've got my battle phase two done. Could even go battle phase three. But I can't call it in. You have to have the tech structure itself down. We'll chuck down tier three here. Got speed ups on. And now I can call it in. You don't have to build it from the tech structure. So honestly, that could come in at a pretty good timing. You know, slightly faster than the Oswind. And you know, I think a lot of people uh, underestimate the command tech. It's actually pretty good as like an Oswind uh, substitute. In fact, we can uh, maybe take a look at the stats of it here. So here it is. You can see target size 20. So it's smaller than the Oswind, harder to hit. Speed 6.3 of the Oswin, 6.5 for the Panzer IV command tank. So it's faster, faster acceleration as well, faster rotation, and more armor. So overall, it's kind of like a beefier flak panzer. And maybe its gun is like a little bit worse against infantry, but it's honestly not that much worse. So I think a lot of people sleep on the Panzer IV command tank as like a Oswin substitute. Can be pretty strong in that role. But yeah, we'll uh, have a look at its new V1 abilities. Two of them here. Mark vehicle 35 munis, light artillery barrage 50. I thought it said 60 in the notes. So taking a look at the light artillery barrage here, you can see the cast range on that. Actually, yeah, quite short. I think that's 30 cast range. Compare that to its range of attack. See attack ground in it's there. Light artillery barrage about 10 shorter than that. We're gonna drop it on this bunch of stuff here. Speed up so the cooldown's instant. So yeah, pretty similar to Light Artillery Barrage from the Commander ability, which is... Is that 90 munitions? I forget, 100 maybe? Uh, the, the delays between the shells are shorter than I was expecting, so yeah, very similar to Light Artillery Barrage in that department. 
short cast range but overall I think this is like very very strong just wanted to double check how long the delay is between the smoke coming down and the shell starting to drop okay well it's relatively quick but it does give you time to dodge as for the mark vehicle gonna activate that now Let's just have no cast range on it. No, and there's no indicating cast range on it. But it looks like it's about 40 range. And when it's active, you can't see that unit in the fog of war. Okay, so that to me seems like the weaker of the two abilities. The concrete bunkers are receiving a couple buffs here. The machine gun bunker can now reinforce in a radius of 15. And the repair bunker now gets an extra repair model going up from 3 to 4. So yeah, so far I haven't really seen too much concrete bunker utilization. So just a nudge here to try and encourage utilization of those buildings. Alright, we're going to have a repair race here between the concrete bunker with the new four models of repairs against an unvetted, unupgraded Pioneer. Looks like these guys got a very slight head start in the repair bunker men, but we can take that into account. And there we go, the repair bunker men completed. The other one maybe about two thirds done. So yeah, quite a lot faster than regular Pioneers. Counter-attack tactics, this is the uh, capping speed bonus in the Mobile Defense Commander. To promote the ability's use, counter-attack will now allow squads to decapture territory quickly. This will make the ability more potent in the later stages of the game when most territory points are under player control. So the capture speed bonus is getting reduced, but the decapture speed bonus is going from normal up to uh, a nice bonus rate, which I think overall makes... Yeah, it's better. I think decapping territory just overall is stronger than capping territory like this. So nice buff here to the uh, counterattack ability. Here's the revised counterattack tactics. This is available at zero command points, by the way. 35 munitions. Got an enemy sector here and here. We'll see how long it takes to decap it. 60 second duration, so pretty long. And look at how fast that's going. We wait here. And capping. So I believe these are ordinarily 15 seconds, both to uh, neutralize and to capture. Maybe I'm wrong about that, but yeah, this is uh, pretty pretty fast in terms of uh, changing hands to territory. You know, with this commander, you don't really have like that many munition sinks, so this will be like very very spammable. And now it works with both decapping and capping. Certainly makes it uh, very, very appealing to use. So yeah, overall that is much, much stronger now, in my opinion. Forward resupply station, this is the new ability that's getting added to uh, joint ops and festering support, I think it is. Converts a garrison building in friendly territory to a forward resupply station. Converted buildings have six pioneers, that's a lot, that will repair vehicles and reinforces nearby infantry. Provides a plus 15% reload bonus to own vehicles that are nearby radius of 25 so it's a pretty small radius costs 200 manpower and 45 fuel requires five command points so that unlocks quite late not going to be able to do those like forward hq shenanigans that uh sometimes saw from the urban defense commander you know this is quite a lot later on but yeah if you are like repairing at your base and they or at your forward resupply station and they try and push you you might be in for a slightly nasty surprise though 15 percent reload bonus is not that huge 45 fuel. This ability, I believe, adapted from uh, one that never got released, so an unreleased commander. So uh, interesting, we'll have to see how that shakes out. Taking a look at the new Ford resupply station. So you have to have this in connected friendly territory, you have to have a squad inside to activate it, similar to most other of these abilities. 200 manpower, 45 fuel. There it is, I've got the OCF flags flying there. And uh, six repair men can reinforce from it as well. All right, repair rate battle. No, nope, it's not going to work. They're trying to run over to here. Ooh, 
What's their range on that? Looks to be maybe like 40 range that they try and stick you on. Both starting at roughly the same time here. Regular pose. No vet. No sweeper. Looks like once again there is some issues. Sometimes like one model doesn't seem to want to jump on. There's a bit of a issue kind of similar to like medics when they try and heal like a stacked up model it looks like it's kind of interesting i don't really recall this happening it's just you know, like masses of squads trying to go for repairs but even you know even though i slow down the repairs a bit by moving this tank around I still see that they are just even with only five models going massively faster than a pyo with no no vet no sweeper upgrades so yeah the repair bonus from this is very, very strong. Grenadier Jaegerlite Infantry Package. This is G43s for your Grenadiers. Didn't see much play recently because it's just honestly not very strong. I actually made a video comparing like all the G different G43s across Axis. And the conclusion was that Grenadier G43s just almost never a good idea to get them, honestly. They're quite weak. So getting a buff here, and hopefully I will eventually release that video once the uh, changes to all these different things have uh, settled down. But yeah, Tweak here unlocks a Model 24 grenade ability. So this is like a close range HE grenade, which is going to replace the rough grenade. So it kind of makes sense, you know, with G43s, generally you want to be in close range. So now you've got a close range grenade to help you in those close range firefights. Instead of the long range rifle grenade, 25 munitions. Now grants mice 10% to received accuracy, so it's going to make the grenadiers a bit more durable, which is kind of nice, because they are quite uh, fragile. Generally take quite a lot of damage as you close the distance with the G43s firing. And the munitions cost is going up from 45 to 60 munis. All right, testing out the revised grenadier G43 package. Up against our single bar rifleman here, close range. I do kind of expect the rifleman still to win this one. Just want to see what the margins like. You know, they do cost the same munitions at the end of the day, one bar. Infantry squad has been killed. We must defend our quarters. 100% win for the riflemen by a, a pretty good margin too. So yeah, we can see up here the rifleman's health after that fight. Somewhere between two and four models. So they win with maybe a little bit under half health remaining. And here they're up against bolstered infantry sections close range. I think pre-patch G43 Greens had a slight edge in this. So I'm expecting them to win here. Yep, so the Green Deers do handle the bolstered infantry sections, which is nice. The real issue, though, becomes late game, you know, with this upgrade. Once they get Brents, then your G43 Green Deers are back to kind of being powerless again. So, yeah, while they do perform pretty well against just, like, regular bolstered infantry sections, then they can kind of pull their trump card, upgrade with Brents, and then your Green Deers feel a little bit powerless after that, so... Alright, so now we've got the revised G43 Green Deers up against 7-man conscripts not in cover, so they don't have their cover bonus here. Pre-patch, 7-man conscripts would win this quite handily. And it's also looking for them quite, quite bad here as well. Oh. At least they can win. It's close. So it's looks like the conscripts are favoured, but not by a huge margin. But that you know is a little bit worrying for the Greenies. I mean, you know, G43s are like the best on the move in the game, so they're very good at firing on the move. But still, you know, they're supposed to be like a close range kind of weapon. And this is, you know, conscripts just out of cover. You know, this is, you know, after they got their VET 3 bonus nerfed a little bit. 
in with the uh, new G43 package with the better HD accuracy. So overall, uh, not that impressive here for the G43 package, I would say. Decided to run this one one more time just to uh, double check. Because I feel like for me, this is like a really important matchup. To see if it's worthwhile getting these green deers. That's a rare sight. Both killed each other at the exact same time. Oof. So close to a 50-50 it looks like. So yeah, the advantages of the G43, they come online a lot earlier than the 7-man conscripts do. So, you know, you can kind of flex that advantage a little bit. But yeah, I mean, this is kind of like best case scenarios for the Grenadiers late game. Point blank. Conscripts out of cover, they don't have their cover bonus. And it's like a 50-50 matchup. That's you know a little bit worrying, honestly. You know, as we saw, like the even single bar riflemen are still gonna beat them long uh, close range. So yeah, I think maybe you know, maybe this could even go back down to 45 munitions. So maybe it's kind of like a timing upgrade. You know, you kind of get it early on, try to like really like ram home an early game advantage. And then maybe late game it falls off a tiny bit. But yeah, with this current current performance, not super impressed still by the Green Deer G43 package. Hull Down is being adjusted to no longer require infantry. This will make the ability easier to use as a tank can find a good position to set up without needing to wait for an infantry squad. Vehicles can now use Hull Down without infantry squads. Five second delay before the bonuses become active once the vehicle has activated the ability. So your held down never saw too much play throughout most of history, but it's actually pretty pretty good. The range bonus it gives you is pretty powerful, especially on the Panther. And uh, yeah, I think this ability is going to receive some uh, further tweaks because uh, honestly, like it might be like sleeper OP just with this change here. So yeah, pretty big buff here to held down. JU87 suppression loiter. This is the one in the uh, assault support commander, I believe, the one with the Tiger and the uh, Opal trucks. Cost is going down from 150 munitions to 125. Stability, though, I think is like pretty decent, like especially in the smaller modes where there's least likely to be anti air when because uh, it only has one plane, so it is somewhat likely to get shot down, but still pretty strong effect. New unit here going into the Luftwaffe supply commander, the Luftwaffe field officer, officer squad with the artillery soldiers replaced with Fallschirmjäger. Same MP40s and defensive stats. Okay. <laughs> smoke artillery barrage replaced with Stuka smoke drop. Grants no line of sight, but no munitions cost. Coordinated barrage placed with Stuka suppression run, 60 munitions. And heavy mortar barrage replaced with Stuka recon pass, 40 munitions. Here's a look at the new Luftwaffe field officer. Got the artillery officer over here for comparison. You can see you got the uh, Falschenjäger models on there. Though I believe stats wise they are identical to the artillery officer. And in terms of abilities, got a smoke drop. Not super long range cast on that. And doesn't provide any sight. Whereas the, uh, you know, if you have it in your commander for 40 munitions, would provide sight. You do have a recon plane though. Vet one available, uh, 50 munitions. Also have the suppression run, 60 munitions, and the same abilities as the artillery officer, same like combat boosts. Now taking a look at the Stuka suppression run, 60 munitions, and as you can see here, actually like a very very long cast range on this. You can only do it in uh, outside of base sectors. That's why I had to come into the middle of the map here. It's going to be quite a long delay as well coming into the center of the map. We'll oh, see how much damage it does. <laughs> Suppression run, eh?
Uh, it doesn't look like it's got any suppression at the moment and it does very, very little damage. Seems to do basically nothing to a light vehicle either. So it seems to be bugged at the moment. Mortar half-track incendiary barrage. Cost is getting reduced from 35 to 20 munitions. Kind of similar to the LEIG one in Firestorm. Austropian receiving a couple changes here. The MG42 upgrade now comes at Battle Phase 2 instead of Battle Phase 3. So quite a lot earlier. They can now build sandbags without commander abilities. So that previously they'll be unlocked at was it one or two command points. So you wouldn't be able to build them immediately after fearing your Austropian. But now you can build them immediately. Construction speed though, they're getting a construction speed penalty of uh, about a third. So it's going to be quite slow building the sandbags. But then that's getting uh, added back in at VET 1. So we're able to build normally again. So yeah, a few tweaks here to Austropian. You know, I did, I've did. i played against them a couple of times and they still felt like okay when my opponent used them against me. So just a few tweaks here to the Austropian. Panzer Grenadier support package, I believe this is the one in the German Infantry Commander. The munitions cost is going down to upgrade it of, from 30 to 20. And the repair rate that it gives you is going up from 1.1 to 1.4. So it's a pretty big buff to the uh, repair rate from this ability. Okay, taking a look at the support package for Panzer Grenadier as part of the German Infantry Commander here. 15 munitions at the moment, said 20 in the notes. Going to do a repair race between them and a uh, Pioneer Squad, no upgrades. Let's go, the PA race is on. Looks like the Pio started slightly ahead. A bit quicker jumping onto the tank. And there we go, the race is over. Pioneers win that pretty narrowly considering they did start their repairs ever so slightly earlier, but yeah. The PUNs with this package still appear ever so slightly slower than Pioneers with no sweepers, no vet. Pan's Tactician is getting a slight delay to its activation to make it slightly harder to instantly block line of sight against anti-vehicle weapons. So now there's a half second delay before the smoke from Pan's Tactician comes out. You know, this ability's very long time been controversial basically since the game came out. So a slight nerf here. Kind of uh, maybe slightly more in the vein of the AEC, you know, which also has a slight delay on its smoke. Quick look at the new added delay to the Panzer Tactician smoke here. Smoke. So yeah, it's not a huge delay, but just a very slight one. The Puma and the Mobile Defense Commander, due to the late command point timing of the Puma, which is geared to fight light vehicles, its build time is being reduced to allow it to arrive onto the battlefield sooner. So build time is going down by 10. I think it still arrives at five command points, so it is quite late ti late timing. So yeah, now you'll be able to spit it out a little bit earlier on. Relief infantry is getting a pretty big rework. The number of squads it can grant is getting lowered. An exchange relief infantry will provide other boosts such as improvement to build times and reinforcement speed. Cost and command point requirements have also been adjusted to reflect these changes. So squad count going down from three to one. Very, very hard to get more than one squad since the duration of these abilities got reduced from two minutes to one minute, like, oh, it must've been about three or four, probably about four years ago, I guess. So basically, you, most of the time you'd only ever get one. <laughs> anyway, Austropian squad always gets an LMG now, starts with the LMG, so that's pretty big buff. Don't have to spend uh, any munis on the upgrade of the Austropian once you get them, that's pretty nice. Now speeds up reinforcement and build times of all units by 50%. So now you've got it kind of like a purpose of this. You maybe activate it during a battle, you have a couple of squads that have to retreat during the battle. It still lasts like a decently long time, one minute. Your squads have retreated back to base. You get a re reinforcement time uh, bonus on them as well. And build time, you know. Maybe you need to rebuild a squad after that or build a tank after that fight. So, uh, you know, don't underestimate this. This is a pretty nice buff here. And the cost from uh, 120 to 90 munitions. Is that right? I thought it was already 90 munitions and the uh, rapid conscription was 120. Anyway, command point requirements are going down from 6 to 5. So overall, a big rework of Relief Infantry. I feel like, personally, 
overall this is going to be uh, quite a lot stronger than it was previously. We're going to look at the revised relief infantry here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to activate it. Relief infantry is 60 second duration and about 20 seconds and I'm going to retreat these squads. So you know you activate it, you're in a fight, battling away for about 20 seconds and then you need to retreat and then we'll see you know kind of how the impact on the retreat and the rebuild process is going to go. All right, there we are, 20 seconds in. So I say you also need to rebuild like a pack after you've done this. The production going on that, and maybe like another Panzer IV. You need fire support. And then you start the reinforcements. So you still got quite a lot of time. At least on a 1v1 map after retreating, get everything fully reinforced after a fight. And like pack, you know, if you stack that on top of the uh, pack build time bullet, and that'll be insane. It looks like the, in this particular instance, but it didn't quite last long enough to spit out a Panzer IV as well. But yeah, having the uh, bonus to re reinforcement time on this is going to actually be very very strong i feel sector artillery to make it more difficult to enter areas being protected by sector artillery the delay of the first shell being launched when a target has been sighted is being reduced interval delay from four to three so yeah when a squad enters the sector the sector artillery is active on the shells will start coming down a little bit earlier on which you know still like you know even after all the changes received to sector artillery still see Almost no play, but maybe this will get it going. Taking a look at the revised sector artillery here, we're going to drop it on this munitions point. It's targeting all the adjacent points, see what the delay's like these days. So that's a lot better actually. Now I'm going to activate sector artillery and then going to spawn an enemy unit into the zone. See what the delay's like. Was quite long, it was about 12 seconds of to guess. <laughs> He's already dead. <laughs> So like in, initially with, after activating it, the shells seem to come down like pretty quickly if units are in the zone already. But if a unit runs into the zone after the ability is already active, still seems to come down like relatively slowly. Stormtrooper vehicle detection is having its cost reduced to match other minimap detection abilities, going down from 25 to 15 munitions. Strategic bombing run, new ability. Carpet bomb over a large area in a line, roughly 40 meters. Drops a mixture of HE and incendiary bombs. 250 munis, so pretty expensive. Planes are immune to anti-air fire. And 12 command points. <laughs> oh boy. Taking a look at the heavy bombing run now. This unlocks at 12 command points, I believe. I mentioned in the note it's supposed to be 250 munitions instead of 300, so... It'll probably need to get addressed. Mm. Oh man, that's a very, very long delay. Very, very, very long delay. To me, it kind of looked like a lot of these are maybe are slightly off target as well. And in quite a lot far further ahead. I target around here, right? So the indicator is maybe a little bit off target. We'll go right right between the two T-34s here. Will once Try this one out again. But yeah, very, very long delay on this one. Which does uh, limit its uh, effectiveness, honestly. A lot of flames, though.
So yeah, definitely like the shells are landing quite a lot on the wrong side, quite a lot earlier than uh, it initially indicates. Looks like they can do some pretty big damage though to like a T-34 if they land on it. That one was about three quarters health and went down there and yeah, overall a lot of flames, flames themselves do seem to be pretty good but yeah, very very long delay on that one and uh, slightly off target as well. Stuggy, to give it more utility, the unit is gaining a smoke barrage to cover assaults. An anti-infantry machine gun can now also be added to provide additional firepower. So it can now get a Pintel for 30 munitions, same version as the one used by the Stuggy, and can now get access to an 80 range smoke barrage. That's pretty good range on a smoke barrage. I feel like this is actually going to make the Stuggy worthwhile getting. So the revised Stuggy, now you can upgrade it with a Pintel mount MG42, which is... Pretty nice, you know, sometimes this would be a little bit weak when squads will get up close to it with the way that its projectile worked. But uh, now, a little bit extra anti-infantry. And we've also got the smoke barrage. Doesn't cost any munitions, don't need veterancy for this either. And look at the range on this, man. Very, very long range. Looks like there's a decent chunk of scatter on the smoke shells. It's a pretty good plume of smoke, pretty good uh, area coverage there. So yeah, that looks to be uh, pretty strong overall. No munitions cost on that. Stuka incendiary bombing runs being adjusted to be more lethal against infantry by increasing how fast the damage will accumulate when one is standing in the flames. So damage over time tick rate is going down from 1.25 seconds to 0.75 seconds. So it's quite a big buff in terms of its damage per second. Here's a look at the revised incendiary bombing run, 120 munitions. It's supposed to have way more damage over time now. Gonna bring it in against these conscripts, see how quickly it damages them. Oof. Oh boy. So it doesn't have super like widespread, but the shells themselves seem to do quite a lot of damage on impact. And then, yeah, the flames afterwards are very, very damaging. So, yeah, that overall comes in, like, relatively fast. It is reasonably expensive, but uh, it does look pretty decent. The Tiger, same command point requirement reduction from 12 to 11 as other heavy tanks. And as I mentioned with the OKW Command Tiger, VET-2 now adds back in the minus 10% weapon scatter, so will be a little bit better against infantry and, you know, scatter shots against vehicles. The Tiger Ace is also getting buffed, a manpower cost reduction to match the King Tiger. And the Vehicle Crew Repair, this is getting added to the German Mechanized Commander. Four command points, acts like OKW Emergency Repairs for 35 munitions. Thank you so much to my Patreon backers, and if you've enjoyed this series, I hope you consider coming on board. 